hello everyone hello beautiful hello handsome how are you all doing guys hello ladies and gentlemen guys so haven't you all missed me <laughs> but if today is your first time of seeing me i am aj yemo and if you are watching the playback of this video why don't you forward it to the main video the, the main video starts at where the intro plays so guys you all welcome to my live stream so today today's live stream is going to be very very interesting <laughs> it's going to be very very interesting but how are you all doing have you did you see my last video or have you watched my last video how was it tell me <laughs> when i ran away from the price <laughs> Abaya is not easy. It's, it's, it's so expensive. It was so, so expensive. Abaya is not easy. So, hello, Rhoda. I can see Rhoda. I can see Efia Lezes. I can see Felicity. I can see EBK and family. You all welcome to my life. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks so much for always coming in your numbers to support me. So, today's life is going to be very interesting. And we'll be doing that with Ikea Dimple. Guys, we are treating the topic, how to know he's the right one. Many of you will ask, he prays too much, he prays a lot, he looks so cute, he's so tall, he's muscular, hmm. he's hairy. But, <laughs> does all mean, does, does it mean he is the right one if he looks so cute? Does it mean he is the right one? But guys don't worry just stay tuned today we are going to give you all the tips to know about how to know he's the right one so before we introduce a key example let's play in the intro yes, 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 yes. Hey, hey. Yes, 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 yes. So we are doing today's live with Ikea Dimple. Ikea Dimple is a wife, a mother, and also a content creator. But guys, if you just join in, why don't you like this live and share it? Invite more people to come and watch and listen to how to know he's the right one. So Ikea, let's invite Ikea Dimple and let's start this video. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Ikea Dimple. <laughs> Hi, AJ. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. How are you all doing? Hi, good, good to see you. How are you, sis? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> so before, without further we do, without further, oh my goodness, why did I say without further we do? Don't forgive me. Without wasting my time, let's get right into today's life. <laughs> So Ikea, I know I've already introduced you, but please introduce yourself to someone who is who is now seeing you for the first time. Well, hi everyone. I am Ikea Dimples. Um, I'm a Ghana born. Funny enough, I was born in Ghana till the age of eleven when I came to the UK. So I've been living here, but I come to Ghana on holiday and all of that. Um, and I've lived in the UK for a while. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of two, two children under the age of two. So it's a bit of a crash course into children. And so, yeah, and I'm a YouTube, I'm a content creator. I just recently joined the YouTube family and I'm loving it. And I create content on family, relationships, lifestyle, career, education, all of that stuff. So that's a little bit about me. I'm sure you'll find out more as the video progresses as well. Yes. And you welcome once again, Ikea Dempo. So let's give a shout out to those who just joined. So I can see Chris Berry, I can see Sizu, I can see Teresa, I can see Daniel and Daniela. They are also a content creator. I can see Crazy Black here. I can see Jennifer. I can see Barbara. And I can see. Um, Felicity to us well. So you all welcome once again to the live. <laughs> okay, so this this is a comment from Jennifer Chumesi. Uh -huh. I've come from Ikea Dimple's channel. I'm excited <laughs> for this collab. Oh, okay. Hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming to support the family us. Here. Yes. <laughs> so Ikea. So let's start. So before Ikea starts, please don't forget to check out her channel and also don't forget to like and share this live. Exactly. So Ikea, share over the live to you. <laughs> So how to know he's the right one, you know, as AJ started us off, you know, a lot of us, we see a man, he's got muzzles, you know, he's got the shoulders, he's got the vibes going on. And straight away, you know, we like, well, I can see, and it's very easy to say, yeah, that's Mr. Right. <laughs> but you know learning learning from my experience sometimes it takes a lot more than what you can see to be able to judge if someone is mr right or not so the first thing even before you go searching for mr right is i think you need to firstly make sure a lot of us women we walk around we have a long list you know we have a list of requirements that we want a man to have in order to say this is mr right so first we need to ditch that list because sometimes it's a setback more than anything because we are treating men like they are just a thing where you just need to tick this, tick that, tick this, tick that, you know? But what's more important, you know, you're allowed to have a criteria, but what's more important is having standards as a woman. So as a woman, you need to say, okay, these are my standards, not a list. These are my standards and these are the things I need in a man. Things that, you know, will make give you a man of substance. So having those standards is far more important than saying, tick, list, green eyes, tick, broad shoulders, tick. You know, those things are just trivial things. So for your standards, you need to make sure you have some things that you are willing to negotiate on and some things that are non-negotiable for you. So for negotiables and non-negotiables, there are some things that, you know, you're willing to bend the rule a little bit, you know? And there are some things that you're, you might just say, actually, nah -ah. if he doesn't have this, I'm not accepting. And everybody's negotiables and non-negotiables will be different. You know, a dwarf, a dwarf negotiable might be, oh, if he's got smelly feet, I'm okay with it. But if he has negotiable, be, oh, smelly feet mean to me, yeah? Do you get what I mean? So you need to know what your negotiables versus negotiables are and stick to it because they will form what your standards are as a person. You know, as women, some women are in a marriage, the husband's cheating, and you hear so many people talking about it, but they are still in it. Why? Because for them, that's a negotiable. It's something they can bend on. But someone like me, Abby, that was a non-negotiable. You cheat out of the window. So you need to know your negotiables and non-negotiable as a woman. And have those standards for yourself. So a man knows, actually, it's either this or not. But don't have that long list because they just set us back far more than they help with finding Mr. Right. So once you know you have you know what the standards are, you know the things that you're willing to negotiate or not negotiate on, then you need to first think about the man's past. And a lot of times, you know, when you meet a man, you feel like you are much better than every ex he's had. You are the best fish he's caught in his net ever before, you know. And a lot of us women, we believe in, you know, our source and everything. However, we need to listen and listen carefully when the man talks about his past and how he treated previous women and his exes. Because if a man is always talking about all his exes, you know, were stalkers, his exes used to always chase him everywhere, his exes were always trying to look from his phone, baby girl, that's what he's going to say about you very soon. So listen and listen carefully about the things he says about his past and how his past relationships ended. Because people do change, but a lot of times, if this same thing has happened with every single woman he has dated, then there's a pattern and that pattern is what we need to look for as women you know so the way he treats the majority of his exes more times is exactly how he's going to treat you as well so don't let the sweet talking and the sweet words in your ears fool you because how a man treats his ex and his past relationships is a reflection of 90 89 90 percent of what your relationship is going to be 
So listen carefully about his past relationships. They are very, very key. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the man's morals. Moral. What is his moral standards? Okay, so firstly, in terms of his morals, what forms part of his morals is his family. Okay, Ekia, before you go on, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I just had a comment that I, they can hear an um, echo okay. for my end. So okay. I just want to fit this one first so that you can continue. Okay. Okay. So guys, is it okay? Guys, is it still echoing? Hello, so when I'm speaking, is it echoing on AJ's end? Hi. I think it's okay. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay, okay. We've yeah. comments that it's okay. All right. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so um, back about his past. So listen and listen carefully. How he talks about those exes and his past relationships. Okay. You know, he can't date five women and everyone was a stalker. Five women and everyone used to want to see what's on his phone. What is that man hiding on his phone that all five women wanted to look on his phone and were all chasing after him? And, you know, sometimes the truth is 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 in between what he's saying. So listen, we are special, of course. We all like to think we are very special. But if he's dated Beyonce, Kelly, Michelle, everybody, and they couldn't stay and they were all stalkers, then we need to be very careful and listen and listen carefully. And then I, I moved on to his morals. You know, what are his morals? What forms his moral, you know, standards as a person? So thinking about his family, how does he relate to his family? How does he treat his family? family. How is he talking about his mom? When you're with him and his mom is calling his phone, is he picking up or is he saying, oh, my mom, I'm doing too much. I'm not going to pick up the phone. Because soon when you're his wife and you are pregnant and you're not looking like the baby you were looking two, three years ago, when you call, he's going to say, my wife nags too much too. Because <laughs> that woman gave birth to him. So mm -hmm. if someone has been has birthed him and even that woman is not being held in high regard, then you need to think and think carefully. How does he treat women around him? Imagine. So think about his family. Does family mean a lot to him? Because if you want to have family with this person in the future, then you need to make sure that how he treats his family is in line of how you want to be treated, you know? And these things, we are talking about, you know, how to know he's the right one. So if family is on your non-negotiables, then he needs to also be a family man. He may not have his children or have, has not been married before, but there are some clues in his present life that we can learn for, from because they will definitely apply to us if we want to spend the rest of our lives with this man. Also, does he have a belief system? And, you know, as a Christian, my non-negotiable is you have to be a Christian. Very what necessary. is his belief system? <laughs> exactly. You know, is that your negotiable or non-negotiable? If it's non-negotiable for you, you need to make sure what, is, what forms his belief system. In his time of need, in his time of trouble, what does he turn to? Because some people in their time of trouble will turn to God. Some will turn to alcohol. Some will turn to drugs. Don't think, say, oh, we are not dating. When we are married, I'm going to change him. If he's been living this life for 20 whatever years, 30 whatever years of his life, what can you really offer that's going to change him so drastically? And I'm not saying women don't change men. I've seen women that come into a man's life and they change him. But sometimes your demons, they may go, but they are lurking somewhere in the background and you don't want to be married 10 years later and that demon comes back with his gang. You know, you don't, you don't <laughs> want that. So if you want to know if he's the right one for you and you know that actually this man's belief system Whenever he's sad, whenever he, he has troubles, he's turning to drugs, he's turning to things that are not in line with what you want, then you stay away. I'm not saying, you know, if he turns alcohol is a bad thing, because for you, maybe that might be what you do, and it might be in line with what you want. And this is why I started with have your standards right. You know, so what can have you negotiate? Your standards right. Exactly. <laughs> so if it's something that is on your, you know, negotiable, you're willing to deal with, then sis, it's absolutely fine. You stay there and you make it work. But if you know that was the non-negotiable, mm -hmm. don't go to marriage thinking I'm going to change it by force, by fire. 
Some women <laughs> have been able to change, but each to their own. I would say stay well clear away from that because they are early signs that will save you so much headache so much. and so much heartbreak and stress. So and they are the thing- early signs that save you from more stress. <laughs> so guys, exactly. don't forget to to send in your questions. Can you yes. hear me? Am I still echoing? Oh, it's perfect, guys. Nice young. Please, am I still echoing? Okay, am I okay? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, guys. I can hear you fine on my side. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. So, guys, as you heard from Akia, you have to have your standards. You have to have things that you can negotiate. You have to also think about his moral morality and everything so guys don't forget to send in your questions and don't forget to like this stream and also visit his her channel her link is in the description box so Ika, you can carry on yes yeah, so um with all these things said you know having your negotiables non-negotiables thinking about his past how he treated his exes his family belief system. Another thing is his temperament. You know, we all have a temperament. What is this man's temperament? When, and you know, sometimes as humans, we can be very good at hiding our temperament. You know, some people will hide it for so long. long. It takes years before you actually get to know what their real temperament is. Because a man on a mission he will woo you. He oh, will sure. say the sweet words and the sweet talks. You know, but what's his temperament? But there are little signs that women sometimes we see that we might overlook. But at the early stages when you are dating, if you are seeing these little signs, then they might be a red flag. So, for example, let's say you're in a car, you're going somewhere, and then a driver crosses this person. You know, this is a stranger they might not know from anywhere. Mm-hmm. This driver just crosses their car. How is this man going to act? If he's there, okay, <laughs> kiki Sis, I will still do him because you must you have to think. Hmm. Definitely you have to think. Okay. When you go to a restaurant, you're out with the person, and then you know the person is treating the waitress anyhow. They are talking to the wait- waitress. And now this is someone they don't even know. You know, this is someone they have no idea who they are. But if they can't treat a stranger right just for that one minute, they encounter them, it may be a sign of their temperament. So we need to be very careful about a man's temperament and what he does when he's raging. Because if he's raging and, oh, did you be at him anyhow, then when you two do something and you're when you're his wife, and actually, you mean so, you're meant to mean so much to him, and you're with him all the time. He's smelt that morning breath, cried so many times. Look, when you upset him, he's gonna be acting the same way towards you. You know, because the more and more time you spend with him, he becomes comfortable. And then the 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 effort he would have had to put into pretending and putting on all those pretense may have died out. So we need to know his temperament before we go into a long-term thing with him. And these are early signs that may be a red flag that might say, mm, this one, dear, I'm going to pack my bags and I'm going to keep it moving. Because if you see those signs, don't ignore it because it may, it's not going to get any better. It's only going to mushroom and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So save yourself some time. Girls, we need to know, is he Mr. Right or is he not? Is he just Mr. Right now? Because sometimes the man, he may have it all together. You know, he might look like Van Vika and have money like a Namwan. He may be the perfect combination of everything. But if his temperament and the way he treats his family isn't right, or it's not in line with the standards that you are not willing to negotiate on, then we need to think twice and think, is this really worth it? Is this what I want to be in for the rest of my life? Because money doesn't make people happy. 
and the money will buy you a car and a Gucci bag, might put a smile on your face for an hour, but when your non-negotiables are being, you know, you're, you're kind of, you've let them go, then you're going to be unhappy because if that's really your non-negotiable, something you can't cope and you can't deal with, and you're in a marriage and that's what you're having to deal with, hmm, you are in for the long term. Let's approach relationships with a long-term hat on and it will save us so much time, <laughs> so much heartache, so much stress. Mm? And then my final thing that I actually want to talk on, I don't want to talk too much, you know, the final <laughs> thing I want to talk about is his intentions. What are his intentions before entering anything with you? And as women, necessary. sometimes... Very necessary. Yes. Sometimes as women we are scared to ask that question too early because we think we might scare him away <laughs> you are scared if you say hmm, when do you want to get married you think it might scare him away but if any man who you say hmm, where is this heading even if it's your first date second date if he's scared by that leave him because <laughs> it's like walking into a shop you see nice dress oh this dress is nice i like this dress but you can't, you know, you can't ask for the price of the dress. You just have to what, swipe your bank card and take it home. Mm -mm. It's going to cost you too much. You need to ask the price. You need to ask, where am I wearing this dress to? Is this dress really worth the price I am paying for it? And that's how we need to see this man. You need to ask him, sorry, babe, what's your intentions? I don't mean go and be, you know, or buy ding ding. Indeed. Don't worry. Next week, you don't worry. Next month, and they are the couture dress. Don't scare him away. You know, we don't want to scare them, but we need to also know what their intentions really are for us. And I use my trick. The one I did when I heard of the price, I was like, "Oh my goodness! I need plain black." You I need plain black. I saw that video. That's an excuse. You say, oh, sir, oh, okay, oh, okay, oh, I, I need to go home. My mom just called me. I need play black like AJ did in her video. Walk out of that shop <laughs> and don't look back. So guys, I can see Wadimaya in the building. Hello, Wadimaya, you welcome to my life. Hi, Wadimaya. <laughs> I did a reaction video of him, but yeah. So, okay. um, so you need to know these things, ladies. You know, you need to know his intentions for you very early on. Because once you have invested one year, two years, three years, that's when some of us, we start to think, maybe I'm closer to it. Maybe he's not going to want to get married today. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe next year. You know, where he has already milked you to say, yeah, we are cow. No, I'm milking was I think I will parent. No, <laughs> Nobody wants to buy the cow when they've already yeah. drank the milk for free. Yes. Indeed, we need to know his intentions early, early on. Ask him if he's he's you know afraid of that question, then he's not your man. I'm very sorry, but he is not for you and he is not your Mr. Right. Some women maybe they're not ready to get married. And actually, if he says I want to get married in 20 years, if it's your you know something you're willing to negotiate on, then that's you. And this is what I want to make clear today that sometimes you listen to people who give you advice, but are they in line with what your standards are? This is why I started with standards because or be an idiot. Only you know Uja and how hot your fire is. Only you know if you want to get married next year or you want to get married in 10 years. Only you know. Do you see what I mean? So you need to know what your standards are That's and what you want to negotiate and not negotiate. So if this man was yeah. get married in a year, and let's say you want to get married in a year and a half, and I'm not saying run from that. No, no. Sometimes you can compromise. There are, there are some things we can compromise on. But if it's so far off from what your expectations are, what your standards are, baby girl, bye-bye, you know. But we'll let you go. <laughs> Away you go. Because pray. Peacefully and quietly exist. And you find your black dress somewhere else, like AJ did. <laughs> <laughs> but the man said, "Hey, yes, yeah, so the man, we are putting them to note 
to know the right thing. Yes, with Maya. So I hope your girl is listening to one bit. Yes, you are doing it. (laughs) (laughs) So guys, don't forget to drop your questions. So yeah, so his intentions and then ask him. So if they're in line with yours, then you know, you know that actually this is something I'm willing to work on and actually it's in line with what I want and what my vision is for myself and my future. Because yes. honestly, sometimes someone is occupying a space and the right one is not able to stop by because the space is being occupied. You know, and as women, I know some men are able to talk to more than one person at the same time without getting emotionally connected. If you could do that, each to their own. But as women, sometimes we get get emotionally invested in relationships. We might say, oh, no, I'm just going to talk to him and see. Before you know it, you're emotionally invested. And (laughs) And once we are emotionally invested, it's like our eyes are linked to our emotions. We can't see a thing after that. Even if you see certain signs, you start to overlook it. You start to bypass it because you are emotionally invested and your eyes and your emotions, they just work together. You we start to <laughs> turn a blind eye to certain things. So we need to make sure early on, early on is the time. I know early on is when you want to impress him, but early on is also when he may let something slip. Yes. And you may be able to catch that in the air. So don't wait to date for one year before you ask, where are we going? Because he's going to say, ah, one year. in <laughs> You need to know from the beginning. If it's five years, you want to get married. And some of us, you might want to wait five years. You're okay with it. Then that's fine. Because it's in line with your standards. Yes. So no, ditch your list. Have your standards right. Know his past and his exes and how he treats women, his morals, his family, his belief system, where is he turning to in his time of need, in his lowest points of his life, his temperament. Is he an aggressive person? If you can deal with aggression, then you stay. If you can't deal with aggression, you go. Very early on, don't waste your time. And you know, a man will actually respect you. If he knows girl went yet, she knew that she couldn't cope with this. She got up and she left. The longer you stay around something that you can't deal with, but you're always moaning about, he's going to keep doing it because he knows you are still sitting there. Because what? Money? Because of what? Because of comfort? Because of fear of not finding the right one? Ladies, let's not let time be the reason why we stay in something that our instincts are telling us this is really not going to work. Time, I know our biological clock is ticking, it's ticking. We want to get those twins out. Growing. They are, do you see what I mean? We are growing. However, don't let that be the reason why you rush into something because marriage is for life. And there's nothing sweet than a happy marriage. A marriage, and I'm not saying once you, he meets all your standards, that's it. No, marriage is work, you know? However, you know that the work he have to put in it's not work that's going to be depressing and giving you stress, giving you so much heartache. You're not going to be, you're not going to be happy in your marriage. Do you see what I mean? And if you watch some of my relationship videos, I talk about how my husband is very laid back, you know. And that for me, that was one of my negotiables. It's something yes. that I was willing to work on. He's very yeah. laid back. Me and me a fire crack, and actually <laughs> it works because he's laid back. And I bring the fire and then it works. You see, it's, it's yeah. things that I can work with. So, you know, but I know that if I don't know where my husband is, he's probably at church. To me, because I couldn't deal with cheating, I found a man who loves to be in the church and do church duties. Not Meshushena or Shere. Papa no ho. Or Shere Mama no ho. <laughs> <My man. laughs> do you see what I mean so marriage will still be work it will not be rosy because he's, he's yeah. met all your standards that you will always and actively be working on things but if you if you've got it right from the start before you entered it the things you'll be working on will be trivial things that can be fixed you know you can change certain things about a man but some things can't change, like a temperament and like his respect for a woman. 
and some things are so deep rooted don't fool yourself and say you are going to be the one that changes it if it's something you can't negotiate on don't leave it until it's too late that you've invested so much time that it's almost too late you know that so many people know about the relationship that you can't leave anymore and when you want to you just force the marriage and go and get married because everybody knows about <laughs> it okay yeah. yeah let's tell them about your channel oh. and also guys so if this her link so that's a kia dimples channel <laughs> Yes. So guys, her link the link to her description the link to her channel is in the description box. You can visit her channel and learn more about Mr. Wright. <laughs> but guys, don't forget to drop in your questions. So we have one question. Okay, we have one question from Dorothy. Mm -hmm. How do you draw a line from being picky and being careful? What is the real difference here? That's a really good question. This is why when I started, I said you don't need a list. Being picky is having a list. You say, oh, sorry, five foot six. He has to have this money in his bank account. He has to look like this. He has to come from here. That's being picky. Being careful is back to the negotiables and non-negotiables where there are some things that you know if someone has is going to cause you sadness it's actually going to stress you out and it's going to affect you emotionally these are things that you have to be careful about because if someone cheating you know it's going to affect you emotionally that's not being picky if you know you're not if you don't want to bend the rules for that that's not being picky that's you being careful and actually putting yourself first being picky is saying he has to be six foot eight when you know the average Ghanaian man is five foot seven. That's being picky because it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Being picky is things like, oh, he wants to get married in two years, but you want to get married in a year and a half, in one year. That's a little bit picky because some these things can be worked on. So picky is things that can be worked on, but you are just forcefully trying to insist on that. And that can't really be changed, like his changed. looks. But I'm not saying if you're not physically attracted to him, go and marry him. However, don't say have have attraction as one of your standards because we are all attracted to different things. Yeah. What might be attractive to me might not be attractive to AJ. We are attracted yeah. to different things. Picky is then having a list of what is attractive to you. Because you'd be surprised, you want a man with slim nose, but you might see a man whose nose isn't slim, but actually you are attracted to him. Sometimes you might be attracted to the way someone carries themselves, but because your list by four says he needs to be six foot, but he's five foot seven, you can't look beyond it because you are being picky and you are sticking yeah. to that list by force, by fire. So have standards, <laughs> but don't have a list. Yes. That's the difference between being picky and also be and then being careful and actually being realistic about things yes so thanks so much ikea dorothy i hope that answered your question so this one is from sugar plum mm -hmm. does the one have to take all the boxes of what you you look out for i know waiting for the Waiting for perfection may make someone mix out on a good person. So that's why I'm asking. Exactly. So again, back to your standards. Your list, your, your standards, should I say, will entail things that you are willing to bend a little bit. So the things that make up your standards, don't let them all be things that you're not willing to bend. For instance, you want a man you know, who's got a good income, but don't say he works in finance and he doesn't work in music, so I don't want it. Do you see it? So sometimes he doesn't, your your standards needs to have things that you are willing to negotiate. That's what I call negotiate. The, the things that he doesn't tick fully, 
and you are willing to actually accept and work on together because as a woman we need to also be able to offer a man something don't say it's all going to be him 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 so if he's not financially stable yet but he's studying and you can see that actually he's almost going to tick the box in a few years time with something that you can offer then you can go for it don't say he doesn't tick the box like on the list so i'm not going to do that because like um sugar plum said it's true that can make you miss out on someone good because he may have a good heart and he may be hard working all he needs is a woman that's going to help him get that vision right and sometimes a woman can bring out something in a man and and something that you expect in that man so don't say mm, he doesn't take the box so you're going to let him go because you may actually be letting something valuable go you may be letting your mr right go simply because you didn't bend and you weren't negotiable you didn't you know negotiate enough on certain things that you are willing to actually bend the rule on so don't stick to the tick boxes Thank you. Throw it yes, away. don't stick to it. <laughs> don't stick to it. Throw it away. <laughs> yes. Because that can be very, very deceiving. Exactly. <laughs> and don't have unrealistic expectations as well. You know? Yes. Look at yourself and cut your coats according to your size. Size. <laughs> so Gina said Papano. <laughs> Papano. Papano. Oh, Papano. <laughs> Papano. They want to know the right Papano. <laughs> we want the right Papano. We don't want yeah. the Papano that everybody is talking about. <laughs> so this one is from Nancy Young. Whenever mm -hmm. I advise people to always pray about their relationship, they think I'm overreacting. <laughs> no, you are it not was just... overreacting. <laughs> yes. Is this that or Denise, you are not overreacting at all. Or you need to actively pray for your future husband. You need to pray these things into existence. But prayer without works is dead. Dead. So, <laughs> so if you're, you're negotiable, um, your non-negotiable is you don't want a man who lies. And then you meet one who's got everything but lies. And there's something you're not willing to work on. Then you start to pray for it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you know, God be gave empty. us wisdom. You pray for oh. wisdom as well as you're praying for your husband, and some, and you pray for the spirit of discernment because it's through true. that you'll be able to discern that actually this is not my Mister Right. Sometimes you pray about something, and honestly, I'll give you an example. I haven't even shared this, not even on my channel, but I'm going to share this here with you today. You know, wow, we are very, very fortunate. <laughs> a privilege. You know, when I was dating, there was a guy that i actually fasted i thought i'm gonna fast and pray about this guy and I, I i with that prayer i was i was fasting about it and i thought he was the one but suddenly in that fasting period there were things that were just mm. one time he just left his phone in my car mm. phone calls messages mm. things just started not being right at all in in my spirit i just knew said something wasn't right about this person he presented himself as also a church guy the mr perfect but through fasting and prayer the my spirit just wasn't sitting right about certain things i started to find out and that's when i knew that prayer works fasting works because through that i just left the relationship i didn't have concrete evidence but I left because I trusted my spirit because I trusted that the little things that I was starting to see that I had never seen during that period meant something. And after I left, months later, people, and sometimes when you're in a relationship, people know things, but they won't tell you. After I left, this person was like, oh, he was dating my other friend. Oh, he took this person's number here. Oh, he did this. Oh, he did that. Sad. Do you see? So sometimes you need to step away from something to see the picture clearly. Through prayer yeah. and fasting, honestly, prayer works. It helps your spirit to be in line with what you are looking for. So yes, guys, do pray for your husband. But I'm not saying stay at home in a cupboard and pray, 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 and don't go out. Go out too so Mr. Wright can see you. Make sure yeah. you're looking <laughs> so when Mr. Wright sees you. He says, what a cute girl. <laughs> yeah, you got everything some. <laughs> exactly. So don't pray and stay in a cupboard. Pray, but add words in, you know. Actively yeah. make yourself desirable to women. 
<laughs> so next question. So this one is from Frida Emifab. How about mm -hmm. if there is misunderstanding between us? I personally want us to solve our issue, but he always bring the third person who is one of his sister. So mm. always the sister wants to know what is going on. Hey, let me start you by telling you, <laughs> man shall leave his house. A woman <laughs> leaves his home, he leaves his home, and the two of you become one. The two of you don't become three with you, him, and his sister. So if that's happening now, he's already <laughs> opened your relationship to the community. Honestly, I don't know the ins and outs of your relationship, Frida. So but she just what? added something that, is it good for him to be doing that because I don't like it? Oh. I'm glad you've ended that statement with, I don't like it. Do you see it? Because for you, you don't like it. Yeah. It's your non-negotiable. So Several. if you yeah. don't like it, I'm not going to be the one to tell you it's not right. And this is my one thing. When you're in a relationship, forget what other people have to say. Yeah. It's you and that person. For someone, yeah. him telling his sister, they are fine with it. Because the sister, actually, there are some sisters that will come and actually solve things for you. But Frida, what I'm hearing it here is you are saying you don't like it. Like it. If you don't like it now, you are not going to like it later. It's great that he's close to his sister, but when you are married, it's you and him. If he can't respect that now, and the sister has already been introduced in, it's going to be very hard. And later in your marriage, maybe after marriage, he will then try to get the sister out. But that's only going to cause conflict. Because what's the sister going to say? Oh, worry, an idiot. On person, on person, do you see what I mean? So how it yes. starts is typically going to be how it okay. ends. Yes. Ain't it? So if Frida, you are saying you don't like it, it sounds like it's your non-negotiable. Yeah. yeah. Ain't it? Talk to him, let him know you don't like it, and try to put things in place. But if over a, a while it's just not changing, Frida, go back to your standards. What do you want? <laughs> So guys, don't forget to like this video <laughs> and share with a friend. And don't forget yeah. to also visit Ikea's channel and just show her some love. <laughs> show me some love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Lee, AJ, I just came over. What's up? Okay, so we are treating how to know he's the right person. And we are doing that with Ikea Dempo. Ikea Dempo is a content creator, a mother, a wife. <laughs> to <ask more. laughs> so this one is from sugar plum as a christian what qualities do you think someone should look out for in a husband right sugar plum so that's a very generic question because again it always starts with you you okay what do you want in a husband what things make you happy and what things can you not deal with but for me as a christian I went, the biggest thing for me was a person's heart and how they treated others and their family because their heart is what's going to tell me a lot about how he's going to treat me, okay? Yeah. So when he has issues, what was he doing? Who was he turning to? He was, and my husband, you know, he's a very God-fearing man and he, he, he loves people. And, you know, he was my friend for about 10 years. That's another thing. Because we were just friends, I had all these years to really, we weren't trying to impress anybody, we were kids, we weren't trying to date or nothing like that. So I got to know his heart as a person. He was a person that people would call, hey, Charlie, I need this, I need that, can you come and help? And he would drop what he wants or what he needs to do and go and help someone else. To me, a person's heart goes very far because that tells me that actually in a relationship or in a marriage, He's going, to, he's going to be emotionally connected to you. I need a man who's also emotionally available and he's going to lead with his heart. So as a Christian, I needed him to be God-fearing, but also for his personal qualities as well. Because some men may be God-fearing, but I'm not saying he, it means he's perfect because we are still flesh and blood. So even though he's God-fearing, he loves Christ, personally, as a person, he may have some qualities that may not necessarily be in line with what you want. So I looked at his heart more. Also, yes. 
<laughs> so she got love yeah. it's all about you. And there's yeah. a saying that you getting married to a pastor doesn't guarantee you a successful marriage. Exactly. So it's all about it you. Really doesn't. It really <laughs> the next doesn't. question. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Is <laughs> that right? Well, Hi, Okay. Sorry. Missy Young. <laughs> Thanks so much for correcting it. Oh, okay. So this one is from Goldsway. Good evening. What well done. I think this is a good question. This one is from Goldsway. Good evening. Well done. I think I like this conversation. Oh, okay. Thanks so much for liking it. <laughs> this one is from Chinese Black Oli. What if all my non negotiables are the ticked boxes? Everything. Oh, so the things you're not willing to negotiate on. So I'm ah, guessing she's saying standard. the things she's not willing to negotiate on are the tick boxes. Well, I guess if it, if you've got a list of non-negotiables, yeah. then so be if you're not willing to bend on it, then don't. If it's your you. non-negotiable is cheating, don't negotiate on it. If your non-negotiable is lying, don't negotiate on it. You know, some women like to be financially stable. If that's what you want and it's really, really a non-negotiable for you, Hey, my video is, I think my video was just, <laughs> is back. So, yes, if your non-negotiables are also your tick box, are your tick, hold on, if my non-negotiables are the tick boxes, yeah. So if it's non-negotiable, then it's a non-negotiable, sis. Don't negotiate on it because you have looked within yourself and you know if he doesn't have this, it's not going to, it's going to make me an unhappy person, then don't do it. Don't do it. There are so many men out there who would, who fall into your non-negotiable category, Shepherd. who will hold you to high regard. Don't let time chase you. Don't let people put so much pressure on you that you land yourself into something because marriage is for life. Yes. It's for life. Don't feel the pressure and then run into something that's not going to make you happy. There yeah. is happiness in marriage. There is joy. I mean, your when life you find the right one. So <laughs> when you find the right one, the right one. Way, <laughs> so next question. Right <laughs> so this one is from Benis. Ekia, you say, Ekia, you saying it all. Well done, sis. Wow. Oh, thank you That's very Ikea. much. <laughs> <laughs> the right same from Benis. The right man is, the right man is there, and time will bring him to you. Don't be desperate. Perfect. Yes. Perfect, Bernice. Desperation. Yes. Don't let desperation lead no, you. No, no. Yes. Yvette, my parents don't let me go out. <laughs> I'm sure you're not locked in the cage, Yvette. I'm sure you go to church or you go somewhere with yeah. your parents or, you know, you are not locked So that doesn't mean, cage, Yvette, you are not dating. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to work. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> on your way to work event, you will find someone you will find someone <laughs> now you don't even need to leave your house to find someone internet social <laughs> internet so this, is now a thing event, so maybe yeah you need to so this one is from lady b lady mm -hmm. b so lady b says i'm enjoying this name so she has she's also called ejwa She's enjoying ah. it. And she gives she gives it a thumbs up. So this one is from Jacqueline Adu. Hey, Hi, mommy AJ. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Jackie. Jacqueline, sorry. I'm doing great, Jacqueline. This one is from AB and Family. I'm still a kid, but I have a lot of questions. By the way, how do you know he's real? So right. ABK, keep on sending your bring in your questions. Drop it. Yes. Drop it. Yeah, let's answer everything for you. Don't keep all you knew. Drop it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to start young, ABK. So you're you're doing the it's, right thing. You know how Yeah, and another one from someone. Sense. I think it's the same question. Like, the same question, but ask in a different way. Please, how will you know he's a pretender? You will not know. And that's the truth. <laughs> you will not know he's a he's pretending some people have a phd in pretending and lying you will not know this is why you need to look at those other not so distinct things looking at something like his heart looking at something so if you know that your non-negotiables are met then because some oh sorry my mom just <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes you know they will pretend and pretend and pretend and pretend but for how long 
there are some things you can't pretend on like someone yes. randomly like i gave the example of your driving his temperament yeah. and it will be the crap of when things happen on impulse like that it's very hard to pretend yeah. some things just come naturally because we've done it for so long so sometimes the things he's saying you wouldn't know he's lying but yes. the way he acts will tell you he's pretending so you will never know if he's lying with Eddie question but with jackie's question you will know when he's pretending by the way he acts so lying yeah. and pretending are two very different things someone can pretend and pretend but sometimes your instincts and you can see it but lying or you know, some people are professional liars you would never know that's why you need to you know pray and ask for that spirit of discernment as well yeah very very necessary mm -hmm. so this one is from okay so we've already answered this question so the next one from frida emifa but please mm -hmm. if a man of god is not working on his own but only the work of god my advice my advice is be very careful oh, okay so she's she has asked the question and she has given us the answer that we should be very careful if a man of god is not working <laughs> okay mm, so this one is from gina telly gina lifestyle aj my ex couldn't treat me well and he treated me like a trash so i moved on my life now I find it very difficult to enter a enter a new relationship. I'm really scared. Any advice for me? Do you know what, sis? You need to work on yourself first. Yeah. So what you are the most important thing to yourself. You need to give yourself that time to heal. You, whilst working on yourself, you are praying, you are socializing, you are doing things. Don't have getting into an, another relationship at the forefront of your mind work on yourself first because when you work on yourself you become more desirable and you attract people more closer to you when you work on yourself it radiates and people see it you already will walk around smiling you'll be beaming you hold yourself in a higher place don't go seeking for another one too soon it's okay to be hurt because that's women we get hurt very easily and yeah. it's fine but don't dwell on it do things and keep yourself occupied and busy and work on yourself if you want to study study if there's a new skill you want to learn do it if it's a business you want to start start that business keep working on yourself and better yourself because the next one you're going to land is going to be better than your ex because you'll be a yes. better person yes and as well to check the things that he said or maybe things that he think or classifying as a trash you think about it and work on it to as well so work on yourself yes. <laughs> work on yourself it's very yeah. good point good points there aj because sometimes yeah. we blame a lot on the men but we need to look yeah. within ourselves as well and just be very yeah. honest yes it's true so this one is for mommy puma please when he introduced you to his family. Does it mean he's real? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Some people can do that. I mean, some people, their mom see them come Monday with a Kriya, Tuesday with Kojo, with Ama. They say, hey, God forbid, Kojo. <laughs> 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 but, you know, some people's mom see them come with different women all the time. And, you know, they don't say anything. Yeah. So just because you've met the family doesn't mean anything. Their brother could lie for them. Their sister could lie for them. It doesn't always mean they're serious. For some people, if a man holds his family to high regard, and initially he, just, he was hesitant about taking you there, and then eventually you can see that, okay, he's taking you home and you are respected in that manner, that could be a sign that actually he's serious. But don't let that alone be the telltale sign that he's serious because... He's probably taken so many others to the home already yeah. in the past. So don't let that alone be the reason why you say he's serious. It may right. form a big part because for a man to take you home is a big deal. But don't yeah. let that be the sole reason why you say he's taking me home so he's very serious. <laughs> you need other things in line. His actions are his actions in line with everything else that you've seen. 
Yes, so don't think he has sent you home so you've hit the jackpot. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so this answer is from Gina again. What is your take about a man who always talk about good things he did for his ex-wife? Mm. Mm. Ex-wife. <laughs> Do you know what? Sorry, my baby. <laughs> Baby is calling mommy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> even baby's like ex wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, you are there, okay? I <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a bad thing because if he's talking about his ex wife in a positive manner but not in an affectionate, loving way, it could be a sign that actually this is someone who looks after women, you know. But if he's talking about it all the time, maybe he doesn't actually know. He could have been with that person for so long that he's just so used to that person. We are all a work in progress. So give him the benefit of the doubt. Communicate. Communication is key. Tell him, do you realize you talk about your ex-wife all the time? It's great that you did all those things for her because for you, that tells you he's very likely to do those things for you too. But speak it, say it to him. Say, do you realize you talk about her all the time? Jai, men pet. Do you see what I mean? But don't completely rule him off because actually it could be a sign that he looks after women. It could also be a sign he still loves her, but communicate it and then give it some time to see if it fixes itself because he probably doesn't know he does that. You know, sometimes we have habits we don't know. It takes someone telling you. And how would you feel if someone left you and didn't you didn't know why? Tell him, let him work on it because relationships are all about communication and working on things. It's not everything we get up and leave. Some things we can work on, like he talks about his ex-wife. So talk to him, explain things to him, how it makes you feel, and then see if he can work on it. Because it might just be something that he needs to get over and leave her in the past. So, Ikea, so we have a lot of questions, a lot yes. of questions. Time won't permit it. <laughs> we are left with some few minutes to go. So we'll just brush through some of the questions. But guys, if you are not able to answer your question, please forgive us. You can just send your question to Ikea and he will, she will answer you on her channel. <laughs> gladly, gladly. Come and visit me. <laughs> yes. So this answer is from Jacqueline Adu. Okay, my idea is, I think the one who is not real is the one who always has sex. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about sex. <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline, you have some number. Okay, so she said her idea is, the one who is not real is the one who always has sex. Again, you know, you know him best. You ask the questions, what are his intentions? You know, what are your negotiables, non-negotiables? Because sometimes sex complicates things. You don't want that for yourself. Yeah. Abstain from it because it complicates. And women, you can't, we can't separate emotions and stuff like that. So yes. if you abstain from, from it, you're more likely to get a better judgment of the person. And if because yeah. of that he leaves, let him go. But abstain from it if you can each to their own but you need to abstain from it in order to separate emotions from what's really real yes before you say he used me he used me but he did not he use me use uh -huh. <laughs> well, no, yeah, yeah. why did you give him <laughs> yes <laughs> so this is from frida again if your parents are not allowing you to go out you don't want you don't worry you will get the papano through social media Yvette said some people are not social are not social so how how is it possible to be in a relationship so the events i'm guessing you mean the the man is not social or they're not social socially going out i think she means okay so some people are not going out and they're not socializing so it's not possible to be in a relationship once you're in a relationship is you and that person when you are married is you yeah. and your husband 
sometimes you don't even get time for friends. You don't get time for outside people because you are so well matched that you delight in each other's company. So even if someone, your husband to be whoever is not social now, if you two gel together and you're able to enjoy each other's company, it doesn't really matter about everyone else. Forget you'll be at, it's you and him. <laughs> it's about you and him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this, oh, this one is for candy words, but I think we've already treated this question already. Guarantee he's gonna marry yeah. you, it doesn't. How many people do even do knocking and then the wedding doesn't come on? Come on. <laughs> so this one is from Naomi. My boyfriend saw me and we were dating within five months. We got an issue and he said, we are done. He, he has done it to me almost four, four times. Few months ago, we broke up, and he has come again. Again, and he's a good man. Okay, is he a good man? She said. Okay. <laughs> the the thing you need to do is communicate. Why did he leave you? Yeah. Why does he keep leaving? Because by knowing the answer to that, you'll be able to know whether he's a good man or not. Maybe Bibi or Hua, he doesn't like. That's why he's leaving. Or maybe it's something that he's hiding that he keeps going and coming so you coming. need to know why does he keep leaving we there are some things you can't just call a judgment on without communicating it talk to him why do you keep leaving once you have those answers is it something you're willing to stay a man that keeps going and coming going and coming if it's something you're willing to stay in then you stay but you need to speak to him and communicate effectively why does he keep leaving and then see if there's a pattern or if it's something there's a reason where you can't deal with then cut your losses Yes. But I think sometimes too, it's, it will be very, very important when you have a recess, when it comes to relationship, if you have a recess, so that you think mm. about the relationship and focus and think where, where the relationship is heading towards too. Ooh. So sometimes mm -hmm. I think very, very That's important. Very true. Yeah. So this one is from Candy Boatin. Please, is, is it the responsibility of a guy you're dating to always cater for your things? No, girl. <laughs> No, there's nothing a man will respect more than a woman. You've got your own. You don't need yeah. him for nothing. You are you are educated. You are hardworking. You've got everything you need. All you need is a man to come and be a man in your life. A man will respect you far more than a woman who's sitting there waiting for your Mr. Right to come and do it all for you. <laughs> Ladies, it's 2020. Let's learn to be goal getters. Let's learn to work hard, just as hard as the men are. Because then when you find the right one, the two of you together will be unstoppable. Don't sit there and wait for a man to come and woo you. That 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 time is over, it's out the window. That's how we end up with Yahoozy boys and then we are stuck because we can't leave because they are providing. Men are provided, providers, yes. But as a woman, you can offer so much more and you can be the one that's pushing the marriage. You can be the force behind it. We need to make sure we are equipping ourselves with the right skills and we are goal getters and we are hardworking women. Let's not leave the men to do it all. 2020, women, we are doing even bigger and better yes, things. Yes. yes. <laughs> so is there any more question? Okay, so this one is from Jacqueline. Hmm, some men okay. This one is not a question. Hmm, some men, if they propose pet, then they start asking, Come and visit me. <laughs> I see, <you. laughs> they are in the hospital. <laughs> Jacqueline, you know what you do? You, funny. You, you, go, you go with your friend. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> you go 12 in the afternoon, you leave two in the afternoon. <laughs> You never know, going to his house might be an opportunity to see more. How is he holding yes. his house together? Go with your yes. friend. Yes, very, very necessary. Go with your friend. Right, go with your friend. Go and see for yourself. Oh, I think, yeah, we've really taken much of your time. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. So, Ikea, please, can you give us your last advice to us? My last final advice is marriage is sweet. Marriage is for life. If oh. you want it to be sweet and you want it to be for life, make sure you do it right and you do it once 
and the rest of your life will just be smooth sailing. Don't rush into it because it's sweet and it's for life. Period. <laughs> so guys, you heard here, don't rush into it. Okay, because it's for life. Mm. so thanks so much if you have any question you can drop it on her channel you can visit yeah. her channel and give her the questions bombard her with the questions and she'll give you all the answers so guys <laughs> thanks so much thanks so much <laughs> thanks so much Ikea for all we, for so giving us <laughs> Oh, sorry guys, sorry. Yeah, I was so we, like, oh, okay, guys. We take you much of subscribe, you know, and we can yes. maybe have maybe I need yes. to invite AJ to her channel. side next. Her link, her link, the link to her channel is in the description box. So guys, visit her channel, just drop your question there, and she'll answer everything for you. As it's, it's been displayed on the screen. So visit her channel, show some love, subscribe to her channel. Guys, drop all your questions to her, bombard her with the questions, and she would answer you. She'll give you all the answers. Every single one. <laughs> so, Ekia, thanks so much for earning our invitation. And also, we, we are so, so grateful. We are, we are so, uh, so grateful. And thank you for and to you, <laughs> <laughs> and to you, our listeners, thanks so much for always coming in your numbers to support your girl, AJ. Thanks so much. God bless you all. So until next time, <laughs> AJ, but don't forget to subscribe to her channel and don't forget to like this stream. Until yes. next time. Hey.